Hello everyone, my name is Gao Yongxiang and I would like to start by thanking the AANMS and the organizers of the Terranostics course for inviting me to share my experience with selective internal radiation therapy. This presentation packs a lot of information, but don't worry, this video will be made available to you to play back at your leisure. In the next 20 minutes, I shall introduce the principles of CERT and dosimetric concepts. My presentation will be mainly about CER spheres or yttrium-90 resin microspheres. This is the most common radio microsphere product in Australia. I will explain what, how, why, and most importantly, why not. Mechanistically, CERT is a flow-directed treatment where the physiology being exploited is arterial hypervascularity. It requires an interventional radiologist to place an intra-arterial catheter in a suitable position. This is the general setup of the delivery apparatus. Once the catheter is in position, the catheter is connected to the delivery apparatus and the CERT spheres are gently pulsed along the tubing into the target artery. As the CER spheres exit the catheter, they are naturally distributed by forward arterial flow throughout the arterial tree according to its tumor to normal liver ratio, also known as the TN ratio. From the perspective of the nuclear medicine specialist, today's state-of-the-art for CERT planning begins with the simulation of the microparticle biodistribution within the target arterial tree. The simulation allows us to carefully extract patient-specific radiomics, which we apply into predictive dosimetry to obtain predicted tissue absorbed doses expressed in grey. Predicted tissue absorbed doses are then translated into the prescribed activity using the medical internal radiation dose or MERD method. After CERT, we would verify technical success using either Bremstralung spec CT or PET CT of yttrium 90 internal pair production. From this workflow, you can see that most of our efforts should be invested into predictive dosimetry where we anticipate all outcomes and circumvent all potential problems before a single becquerel of CER spheres is injected into the patient. As nuclear medicine specialists, we must have a good understanding of radiobiology. The MERT schema provides us with an excellent framework to plan our treatments in a scientifically sound manner. Central to the MERT method is the radiation absorbed dose expressed in grey, which is the product of its dose rate and residence time. In the context of CERT, because the effective half-life of radiomicrospheres is identical to its physical half-life. The entire dosimetry is simplified into a single constant absorbed dose coefficient of 50 gray for 1 gigabecquerel of yttrium-90 uniformly dispersed throughout 1 kilogram of tissue. But it is important to remember that this simplification is derived from the core principle of dose rate, time, and the radiation absorbed dose. Today's standard of care is the artery specific partition model, which is a tomographic modernization using catheter directed CT and spec CT, which is an improvement from traditional planar imaging. And we are rapidly progressing into voxel dosimetric methods. So if you are still using the semi-empiric body surface area method, you should consider modernizing. The partition model is based on the MERIT method developed by Ho and co-workers in Hong Kong 
in the 1990s. It considers the tumor, the non-tumorous liver, and the lung as separate dosimetric compartments, which are interrelated by the lung shunt fraction and the tumor to normal liver ratio. However, the main weakness of the partition model is its assumption of uniform activity distribution, which is a false assumption. The original partition model was based on planar imaging. With the advent of SPECT CT and catheter directed CT, this has been modernized into the artery specific partition model, which is today's standard of care and is invaluable for patients with complex anatomy. In this example of gastrointestinal stromal tumor liver metastasis, we have a liver with abnormal arterial anatomy. There is a left hepatic artery, a small accessory right hepatic artery supplying segments 6 and 7, and most of the right liver is supplied by an aberrant right hepatic artery originating from the superior mesentric artery. The combination of catheter-directed CT and MAA spec CT enables us to reliably delineate different arterial territories and to measure artery-specific tissue masses and TN ratios for artery-specific partition modeling. MAA spec CT has also modernized lung predictive dosimetry and improved its accuracy due to attenuation and scatter correction. But MAA spec CT of the lungs without respiratory gating is vulnerable to misregistration artifacts at the diaphragm. This slide shows you a method to overcome this problem. Please be aware that the conventional liver to lung shunt formula that is used throughout the world and described in all technical guidelines is only partially correct and sometimes completely wrong. This is an example of a patient who died from radiomicrosphere pneumonitis a few weeks after CERT. Her liver lung shunt fraction was 6%. So what went wrong? The problem highlighted by this example is that the apparent lung shunt fraction of 6% has been numerically reduced by the inclusion of the whole liver counts into the denominator. Alternatively, by calculating the tumor to lung shunt, the lung shunt fraction is actually 41%. But the lung shunt fraction is only part of lung dosimetry. Measuring a patient's specific lung mass is important because the conventional assumption of a 1 kg lung mass is usually wrong. After measuring all dosimetric parameters, they can be keyed into their respective arterial territories. The user keys in a normal organ constraint, which in this example is the non-tumorous liver and using the measured TN ratios and the lung shunt fraction, the partition model would derive the artery-specific yttrium-90 activity, which is summed into the total prescribed activity. This is a spreadsheet that I designed for my predictive dosimetry, and I would encourage you to design your own spreadsheet so that you have a good understanding of its principles. This is an example where we were in full control over all aspects of CERT to guarantee a successful outcome. This was a bulky hepatocellular carcinoma where we prescribed a predicted tumor absorbed dose of 210 gray to guarantee an excellent tumor response. This patient was successfully downstaged to curative resection and remains well today. 
The CERT to the right liver lobe also induced contralateral hypertrophy of the future liver remnant, which improves the safety of his liver resection. Ask yourself this. If you have already foreseen all possible outcomes and you are able to manipulate the present to ensure the outcome of your choice, are you ever surprised by the result? At this juncture, we must go back to core radiobiology. It is obvious to most of us that one gray between different radionuclides do not have the same radiobiologic effect. But can you explain why one gray of spheres is not identical to one gray of therospheres? And to take things further, do you know why one gray of spheres is not identical to one gray of spheres for two tumors of the same size in the same patient? To answer those questions, let us consider this example of a technically successful CERT. Most of us would be happy with this scan. But take a closer look. Can you see the problem? The problem is that some portions of the tumour are over-treated whereas other portions are under-treated. This is the problem of heterogeneity, which affects not only CERT but every other form of radionuclide therapy. The problem of heterogeneity can be expressed in the form of a dose volume histogram, which is an established concept in external beam radiotherapy planning. By plotting out different dose volume histograms and correlating with their clinical response, a threshold for complete response has been identified as D70 greater than 100 gray. In other words, to maximize a tumor's chance of complete response, we should aim to deliver more than 100 gray to 70% of the tumor volume. Its equivalent mean absorbed dose was recently proposed by Golami and co-workers as an initial dose rate of greater than 50 gray per day for complete response, which translates into a mean tumor absorbed dose of approximately 200 gray. But mean absorbed doses are not helpful if the activity distribution is very heterogeneous. In such situations, we fall back to the dose volume histogram simulated by MAA spec CT. By escalating the prescribed activity, we will push the dose volume histogram as far to the right as possible to exceed the threshold of D70 greater than 100 gray. At this point, let us remind ourselves of the radiobiologic importance of activity, heterogeneity, dose rate, residence time, and the absorbed dose. These principles apply to CERT as well as all forms of radionuclide therapy with the additional complexity of time. Several solutions already exist to address this problem. There is dose response guidance for CERT spheres expressed in terms of mean absorbed doses or voxel dosimetry to guide your predictive dosimetry. CERT is first and foremost a arterially directed therapy and therefore the nuclear medicine specialist must understand each patient's unique angiography in order to plan safe and effective CERT. The interventional radiologist plays a central role in CERT. It is therefore critical to communicate effectively with the interventional radiologist to ensure technical success. And there are many techniques that an interventional radiologist can use to ensure safe and effective CERT. Therefore, a healthy exchange of ideas between the interventional radiologist and the nuclear medicine specialist is vital. 
Technical success cannot be assumed and must be verified by either Bremsstrahlung Spec CT or Yttrium 90 PET CT. Technical guidance is available on how to detect non target Yttrium 90 activity. Yttrium 90 PET CT of very low abundance internal pair production results in noisy but very useful images with better spatial resolution and quantitative accuracy as compared to Bremsstrahlung Spec CT. Yttrium 90 PET CT can not only quantify the residual activity, but can also localize the sites of microsphere trapping along the delivery apparatus. You can also indirectly quantify the true lung absorbed dose without scanning the lungs using Yttrium 90 PET CT. Tumor hypervascularity is the most important criteria to determine suitability for CERT. This is regardless of the type of liver tumor. The patient should also have satisfactory liver reserve and performance status. In the recently updated BCLC guidelines, CERT may be considered in early or intermediate stage hepatocellular carcinoma, unsuitable for radiofrequency ablation or surgery. Recent Asian consensus for hepatocellular carcinoma is much more aggressive and considers CERT for all patients unsuitable for radiofrequency ablation or surgery. Recent consensus for colorectal liver metastasis considers CERT for second-line therapy or to induce contralateral hypertrophy while awaiting liver resection. This slide is a reminder that a simulation using a surrogate can never be expected to be identical to the actual therapy. It is therefore our responsibility to account for all real-life uncertainties during predictive dosimetry. The rapid scientific progress of CERT over the past 20 years has been driven by the understanding of radiobiology centered on the radiation absorbed dose expressed in gray. Principles demonstrated by CERT can be extrapolated to systemic radionuclide therapy with the additional complexity of time. And once you have a firm grasp of nuclear medicine internal dosimetry, you will find yourself liberated from the empiric paradigm and free to expand the scope of terranostics with unlimited possibilities. Thank you for listening to my presentation and also to the AANMS and the organizers of this course. I wish you the very best in your Terranostics career.